CataractCoach.com, white cataract and anterior capsule tear. How to successfully complete this challenging case. And our guest surgery is performed by Dr. Gustavo Huning from Brazil. So we're going to speed the video up two times normal speed. There's the paresthesis, there's the main incision. And you can see this is a white cataract. There's some pearlescence to it. See a little pearliness? That tells me it's probably intumescent. It's probably going to have fluid in there. So try pan blue dye going in to stay in the capsule, putting in the viscoelastic, and let's see what we get here. Starting off with some capsule forceps, so fixating the eye with the chopper, capsule forceps go in, and let's see a rectus, and immediately, oh, it runs right out. You have an anterior capsule tear there that ran out towards the zonules. You see there, right where the chopper's holding the eye, the rest of the rectus can be completed, but now how do you finish this case? That's an area of weakness, and you don't want to have that zip around to the lens equator and then zip again to the posterior capsule. So how can you prevent that? Let's watch this surgeon in action. So rotating the lens to make sure it's freed up, and let's see what the technique's going to be here. It looks like a chop technique of some sort. So he's holding the nucleus with the phaco probe and using the chopper, getting some chops in there, and then removing these pieces bit by bit. And that looks great. Again, you want to avoid doing too much manipulation in the capsule bag. So if you do a divide and conquer technique, let's say, and push those, separate those pieces and push outwards towards the lens equator, you may cause that anterior capsule tear to zip out or become worse. And so here, now you can see very clearly, there's that capsule right where the chopper is, and you can see that anterior capsule tear, and just being very cautious here. So that's a, a nice little uh, procedure here to be gentle in the eye. And let's take the phaco probe out. But before that, oh, I like this maneuver. Putting the viscoelastic at first. Because you can sometimes, if you let the AC collapse like you normally do, that can put enough of a strain on that anterior capsule tear out. And it can zip back to the posterior capsule. And that would be just not a good thing here. So we're going to be cautious. So I'm going to load up the lens. And now, what are your options here? You can still put the lens in the capsule bag. Obviously, orient the haptics 90 degrees away from that run-out area. Let's see what's going to be going on here. So it looks like the lens is already loaded up. And we want to be gentle. So when this lens goes in, let's just get it to gently slide in the bag and don't push too hard on the posterior capsule. So here comes the lens. Looks like a single piece acrylic lens. And that's going in the capsule bag. And that's positioned quite nicely. And again, the haptics are 90 degrees away from the area of the anterior capsule runout. And so that's going to be good. Now we're showing the video at two times normal speed. Dr. Huning is a fantastic surgeon. And what is that that's coming out now? Was that viscoelastic? No, that's silicon oil. This is an eye that's already had retina surgery, vitrectomy, and silicone oil placed. And a little bit of oil is coming through that one area. And see that? When the AC collapses, more silicon oil comes through that area of capsular runout. And now you've got a lot more of the oil coming in the anterior chamber. So you need to pressurize the AC to prevent that from happening again. So that looks really good. Air bubble, big air bubble like this also can help. But we don't want to leave oil in that anterior chamber. Now, Dr. Huning is also a retina surgeon, so he can certainly handle it. He's very comfortable in working with silicon oil. So again, placing that big bubble there, you definitely want to avoid prolapsing more of the silicon oil in the anterior segment. Now, in a patient like this, remember the lens cuffs. If you are planning on leaving silicon oil in the vitreous cavity, that definitely changes your lens calculations. If you do nothing, the patient's going to end up very hyperopic afterwards. So you really need to add a lot of power to the lens. Usually four, even five diopters worth of power added to the IOL in order to achieve close to your target. And there's a, a good information about that on cataractcoach.com. Just search for silicon oil, and it'll teach you all about those lens calcs. So one little bubble left there of silicon oil. That looks pretty reasonable. And let's call this a day. So nice case, Dr. Huning. Thank you for sending that in. We really enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you 
a better surgeon.